Greetings one and all, this is Lloyd Brown. Welcome social media family to episode number what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5, 5, not 6, 5, 5, mm. bit of French. Yeah, that's, that's it, <laughs> yeah. that's it, petit pois, <laughs> pommes frites, french <laughs> fries, that's it, that's all I've got. So, we're here with warm the amazing, and the warm and easy, yeah. DJ Warm and Easy, Lloyd Mullins, aka DJ Warm and Easy from World Beat Music. DJ Warms, you know. Yeah, for shorten it. If not short. tepid, not Luke, no. not Luke warm, warm, <laughs> warm. warm. See, and um, the last episode we was talking about uh, the interlinking of the radio stations and you know and and the DJs and the music and the club culture at the time. Yeah, at the time of the nineties yeah, of the nineties. Yeah. So now we're gonna go into you know his first late nineties. No, oh, yeah, uh, early two thousands. Yeah, early two thousands. Yeah. So we're gonna go into when when you made your your break let's say and it was kind of a, if you want to look it depends how you want to look at it if it's a lucky break or a good break because what happened at the time now in Luton you know you got your community radio and, and your community radio st well we didn't have any community radio well we did have the, the pirates as they said but um, the BBC now didn't have no programs what catered for the black community but they were giving the Asian people in the town their own program and training them as well right. so some of our community leaders approached them and says well look that's not fair because you've got guys that are working on the radio right now see you know and and they've got a little bit of um knowledge and skill of doing what they're doing why don't you take some of those to train them to do a show on the radio and that so, was when that was when 2005 that was in 2005 so they decided that they were going to take on 15 of us all together from one radio station, mm -hmm. which was LUR, Luton Urban Radio. And there was a bit of um, friction there because the, the, the actual owners of LUR didn't want to lose so many people at once. But then again, it's a break in the music moving forward. Right. You know, we still were going to, I mean, they had time to replace us with other people. But that aside, the BBC now decided to take 15 of us on and train us for three months in 2000, late 2005 and we had to learn about how to do interviews, what you can talk about, topics on, you know, if something happening in a newspaper, you can't just talk about it or in the media, on TV, you can't just talk about it. You have people who, if you want to talk about a topic, you let them know what topic and then they have lawyers that will say what you can speak and yeah, what because, you can't speak be, about. Because, because the BBC, the BBC, they had to show they have to be indifferent. Indifferent, yeah. They can't, they can't hold a view of any kind, kind leading one yeah. way or the other. Well, you have to have the view of both sides. So yeah. we have to learn all of that, how to use the equipment as well. Okay. I mean, that was another thing. Walking into the BBC studio for the first time is like walking to the cockpit of an aeroplane to us. <laughs> but it was still exciting. Yeah. You know? And I said they took 15 of us, but it wasn't 15 programmes. It was, I think it was about five or six programmes. And then you had to have your own producer and people that would go out and do interviews for you and people that would recruit information and so for the uninitiated right mm. what is what is the role of a radio producer radio producer um it, you, as a producer you have to organize what you're going to do in the program how you how you how you structure the program whether you're going to have a chart in there uh, if you're going to do an interview slot you know and 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 how you basically what type of music you can well they allowed us to play what we wanted to as well that's another thing as long as it was nothing political or about guns or sex or anything like that right. you know or violence so we could play what we want which was good um we weren't allowed to advertise but in our culture as they said they know that we keep dance and everything so we could read the flyers mm -hmm. as long as you don't mention the entrance fee so they did give us some leeway you know but um, with my program, I f but the other thing though, they didn't give us any help. We had to do all our all our stud all all the work that was done in our program was done by us ourselves. Right. And they took us on as one group. They were going to call us the Black Nation <laughs> on the BBC. Right. Okay. I could I could see that going down well in the AGM. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? That didn't really go down well. We said no. We want our own individual programs because we're doing individual programs. There's a gospel program. There's a talk show. There's a reggae show and an R&B show. So. We, but that we still had to work as a, under the umbrella of one group. Sure, sure. And then over the period of time now, we actually, they were going to put us on medium wave. We were only going to be on medium wave, oh, okay. which some people weren't happy with because, as you know, with the West Indian culture, we don't listen to medium wave unless it's for sport. And it, at that time anyway. And, um, and even then you wouldn't be listening to it because you've got the choice of community radio to listen to on FM or FM on, on, on the BBC. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, so some of the guys dropped out 
But I decided, you know, it's a foot in the door mm. and you're going to learn. It might make you some contacts as well. So, and on the week that we were going to go on air, 20th of January 2006, they said they're going to put us on FM. And on top of that, everybody's going to have an 8 to 10 show every day. You know, and it was groundbreaking as well because no BBC in the whole of the UK or wherever had ever taken on DJs from pirate radio, mm. as they called it, into legal radio. And it was announced on Anglian News and stuff like that. It was in the newspapers. It was a big thing. Persistence beats resistance. Thing. It was a big thing, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so. And there was a few meetings that we went through as well before, before they actually, you know, before the, the, the company put forward the names of the guys who they wanted to be on the radio itself doing a programme, and I was lucky enough to be one of those people that was chosen. See. You know, and, uh, yeah, it was an, an honour to me anyway. Because, so you know, so, so how, how, how did you celebrate that? Oh, how did I celebrate? Oh, we had a, we had a, um, we had a big party amongst ourselves yeah. in, in a nightclub and played music, you know, the usual thing, rave. <laughs> we just raved it out, man. Standard procedure, Standard you know, procedure, as yeah. you do. Yeah. <laughs> it was exciting. It was really exciting. The first night, though, it was, was nerve-wracking, mm. you know, because while we were training, um, we had to go in every evening when the station's off air, right. go in the studio and pretend like you're on air, and you'd have another person in another studio who's the producer. You'd have your headphones on. Yeah. You'd be doing your show, talking about whatever you're talking about, and all of a sudden they'd bite in and said, Lloyd, there's been an incident at Luton Airport. You've got to announce it. There's been a plane crash. Right. And then you have to react. They want to see how you react to that. And that's more, and that's more or less like what they do on TV because when you see, when yeah. you see like, what, you know, watching breakfast news and yeah. stuff like that, you, you, you have the broadcasters. They've got the, the airpiece in the air. Yeah. And it's the producers actually giving them the information, the, information, the airpiece. Yeah. And, they, and the way they have to deal with it, it has to be flawless. It can't be... That, well, today we're we're, yeah. we're we're going to new we're going to new and Abbey and we're going to talk about <laughs> yeah. pig farming yeah. and what? <laughs> we what was that? No, you can't do that. It's like we're yeah. going to be talking about pig farming. Oh, by the way, we have got something. We have got a news flash coming from Newton Sands. Yeah. What DJ Woman is his sound? Just kill us all the other day. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you have got to make it just sound sound smooth, fluent, and yeah. smooth. Yeah, and they were watching us all the time and listening. You know, they're, they're watching us. We, we were aware of that. They're always watching and listening, but. The more effort you put into it, the more time you put into it, is the better your program. Absolutely. And you know, we, we, we used to be there till like three, four, five o'clock in the morning, practicing, practicing. And you know, and you'd have everything would be scripted mm -hmm. as well, so you can refer back to. They teach you stuff like that. You know, so it, it was all good. You know? So, okay. I'm sure, I'm sure you alluded to it in the past episode. Mm. So, the first song that you played. Was it, it was it was Pirates yeah, Anthem? Of, that was one of the first tunes I played. I think one of the first, the very first tune I played was um, was actually Dance All Queen, Beanie Man and and Shovel Franklin. But mm -hmm. it, it was a it was a more of an R and B mix. Oh, okay. and I used to use that like an intro to my show every week for a little while until I decided I'm going to get a jingle that I can start the show with, mm. which is what I still use now. <laughs> which which jingle was that? Um, uh, the, it's the Beatles song, Let It Be. Oh, okay. Somebody sing that, sings that as my intro to my show every week. Let it be, let it be. Warm and easy is the answer. Let it be. That's the. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna. I'm gonna guess. Is it Lukey D? Uh, no, it's an artist called Tidal. Tidal from Jamaica. It okay. sounds like Lukey D, though, isn't it? There's a, you know. <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I was, in, I was in the ballpark. <laughs> it, was, it was close because you know the voices do sound similar. Yeah, yeah. Lukey yeah. D's a great singer as great well. Great singer, yeah. great range, great. Yeah. He's to me, he's one of those singers that got. What I call Brock glass pitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? You put mm. you put put him to a glass and he sing hard mm. and loud enough. I mean, uh, talking about singers, there's a few singers that came up as well from Jamaica, which was like Lukey D, Sanchez, Richie Stevens, you know, um, Ian Sweetness, quite a few. And then in the UK, you had yourself, Peter Huntingale, you know, um, Maxi Priest, Don Campbell, plenty of singers, plenty of, you know, plenty of vocal ranges. But I find that the DJs used to play mostly D DJ tune. Okay. That is the problem with, with the UK reggae. Too much DJ tune up there. Right. So let me ask, let me ask you this question. Um, as your profile and popularity was raised mm. while you was working in the BBC, who was the first, who was the first artist that you had the, that you had the privilege and pleasure in interviewing. Dennis Al Capone. Yeah, Dennis Al Capone came to the studio with, yeah. with Anthony Johnson. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, uh, but you know, the other thing though, though, like though, being on pirate radio, I got to meet and going to record shops as well. I got to meet a lot of artists before. I knew yeah. a lot of them before I come to the BBC. You know, because right. some of the time they were wondering, how do you know? Because I got all the interviews arranged myself with Ken Booth, whoever I interviewed. I did all everything myself because they offered to have somebody come in and if I say I want to interview Gregory Isaacs this week, that person would go out and try and arrange an interview. But me knowing who I know, I could more likely get the interview quicker than they would. Right, you right. Know, so I'd rather do everything myself and know that it was done. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, one of the first people I interviewed was, was Dennis Al Capone and Anthony Johnson. They came to the studio. Then Michael Prophet came there. Um, Bonnie Ruggs from Third World. Ricky Trooper. These are all people that came to the studio. I've interviewed many over the years, but, mm -hmm. you know, my idols, uh, to interview my idol, you know, Dennis Al Capone, Ken Booth. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember. I remember when I arranged for that interview. I phone. I got a phone number, yeah. and his wife answered the phone. Yeah. And I goes. I introduced who I was, and I said I was looking to do an interview um, with, with Ken Booth because he's a legend in the business. And she goes, "Okay, I'll get him for you." And he come on the phone. As soon as he talk, I knew it was him. And he goes, "Who that? Cool and easy, out warm and easy. <laughs> Speak softly, yeah. warm and yeah. easy. Why <laughs> me the the phone? Speaking of which, right. Um, he's got a new album out, and it's, yes, it's called correct. Inner the Yard. Yeah, yeah. I've got and a copy I, of and it. And I, I saw the video, and I'm thinking, my God, this man has been singing for 50, 50 plus years. Yeah, yeah. And he still sounds like him, him there with him yeah. there with Trojan Record. Yeah, yeah, that's Ken. But he came to Luton and did a show as well at the Carnival Arts Centre. And he's dancing around as well. Let's feet. not quarrel. Yeah. Yeah. Let's Legend. not fight. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna walk, 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 walk in on a freedom <laughs> street. So I'm just regressing. I'm just regressing. But the thing is, right, like though, people like us, we studied the music and we studied the artists and what they were about, you know, and we have that respect for them to this day. Whereas the youths them nowadays, they're not studying, but Sorry to stick a pin again, and, 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 and this is going to allude to a story that David Rodigan told, um, which kind of saddened me, really saddened me, where he was talking about... Um, he was talking about the way how the music is basically received in Jamaica right about mm. now, and the, the, the regard or lack of um, regard of the veteran artists mm. like... The Abyssinians. Yeah. The Abyssinians was mentioned. And basically the youth elements was more or less saying, well, who are the Abyssinians? Oh, yeah. uh, you know, them for Sido and them for retire yeah. and all them things there. And I'm thinking, how, how I've heard people say that with my own ears and I couldn't believe what how I'm hearing. How can you say that? Yeah. That's that's like <laughs> Sacrilege. That's man. like you <laughs> that's like you telling your mother and your father, go sit down, go sit down in a wheelchair. Yeah. 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 You know, don't even don't even wait for you to need a wheelchair, go sit in a wheelchair. And I'm thinking how can how can you have that mindset knowing that you, your forefathers basically your your music was built upon the shoulders and the backs of your these forefathers these yeah. legends yeah your mum and dad met each other and listened to these people music and produced you yeah exactly <laughs> you know do you know what i'm saying and and, and that's yeah. that's that is really really sad yeah. but it's 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 a generational thing isn't yeah. it i mean at the end of the day it's like it's, it's from blackboard and chart to tablets you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah. You know, it's something that we can't go back to, you know, but, you know, we, we, we can take we can take what we learned from Blackboard and Chalk and implement it in the tablets. But yeah. some people don't even want to they don't even want to go and get the Chalk, much less the Blackboard. And they just want to do their own thing at their yeah. own speed and what have you. And, but, and the thing why I have respect for these artists as well, right, is because when I interview them, remember, they're my idols, you know, that I'm excited to meet them, but they're really down to earth people. Mm -hmm. They're really, really down to earth. Yeah. You know? Dennis Alcopan, that was a great interview. Mm. And and he said to me that um he said to me that he'd been interviewed in Jamaica a few times and it's like them only give him like 10, 15 minutes. You know what I mean? I said, how can you be interviewing somebody like Dennis Alcopone on your show and you're only giving him 10, 15 minutes in Jamaica? I give him the whole two hours. Because we want to hear the whole history. Yeah, absolutely. Know? And then yeah, so it's sad, but they're still performing though, that's the main thing, they're still touring, you know, so mm -hmm. maybe the youths now will get to learn in the end about our history and in the UK, the UK reggae as well, because apart from Jamaican reggae history, I think the most important outside of Jamaica is the English history of, of reggae. And why is that? Because 
the United Kingdom was the first stop yeah. that the music made yeah. from the Caribbean. Yeah. From and I grew through it as well, right? I grew through this period, right? And I know for a fact that Bob Marley is known globally, but it was people like Desmond Decker and Jimmy Cliff that came here and made a mark first. Get up in the morning, saving <laughs> for Brits, huh? Yeah. So that every month can be fair. Oh. And this is another thing, this is another thing, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just going side topic, Israelites. right? Israelites. Mm. When you hear a song now, you know, when you hear a song back in the day, it just evokes memories of, of your childhood and growing up and Jamaican culture. Yeah. Now with advertising, Every time I hear that song, it reminds me of the Maxell cassette ads yeah. with the man, with, with Larrington Spence yeah. holding up, do, doing a Bob Dylan and holding up these signposts yeah. with the pronunciation of the words people think it is, yeah. but it's not. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I, that's what I, so I'm just, I'm just going off topic here. Well, I'm going to go off topic a bit as well, because there's something I want to do. You brought up something in my memory as well about what appealed to me about the artists of that time as well. When you watch people like Nicky Thomas, and before and we can before, before we, we have to stop but we will, but we will go hold that thought but we're going we're going to the 16 minute mark so we'll catch you on the next episode back soon <laughs>